Batman is one of the biggest superheroes on the planet, and everyone is familiar with his story and his life, meaning they know he is Bruce Wayne and that he owns Wayne Enterprises, and runs the company by day, and dresses as a bat and beats up criminals by night. And one of the key parts of the Batman persona is the Batcave, which is his lair, located under Wayne Manor and accessed through secret passages. Now, oddly enough, the Batcave was not actually written for the comics. In the comics, there was just an underground tunnel that led to where the Batmobile was kept. But in the Batman movie serial, they needed a place for him to be Batman, and so they decided to give him a secret hideout in the form of the Batcave, since bats live in caves. This idea was so good that it was later incorporated into the comics, and now in the modern day, it's an iconic part of the Batman mythos. So much so that it feels kind of odd that it wasn't made by the comics, as Batman needs a Batcave. But since it has become such a large part of Batman's legend, nearly every time Batman is in a TV series, movie or video game, he has a Batcave. And this video is going to look at the 10 best Batcaves ever featured in video games. The ranking is based on how accurate it is to the comics version of the Batcave, how interactive it is, how much it makes you feel like you are Batman, and just by how awesome it looks. Number 10, Arkham Asylum. This game did not technically speaking feature THE Batcave, but it did feature A Batcave on Arkham Island. I built it years ago. It's best to plan ahead for situations like this. Batman made the Batcave in the event he ever needed one on the island, which seems like a million to one chance, but Batman does always have a plan for every eventuality, and it did happen that he needed it there during this video game, so Batman was right to build it. The cave has the essentials of a Batcave, one hell of a sexy computer, a lab for synthesizing chemicals, such as the antidote to the Joker Titan formula, some extra bat gear is there with a spare Batmobile and Batwing, and it also features a pretty cool waterfall across the entrance path. And one of the best things is that it was the first proper Batcave that ever really featured in a video game, at least in terms of open world interaction for the player. There are other Batcaves before this in video games, but none of this calibre that the player was able to fully explore. The entrance is in a hidden area and requires a full body scan before it will grant entrance. Identity confirmed. Disabling countermeasures. Which explains why no inmates of Arkham Asylum ever accidentally stumble across it. Though it does seem like a big risk to keep this on an island of insane, and in some cases super intelligent, criminals. How'd you manage to keep this a secret? It's me, remember? And since he only ever seems to use it once, it doesn't really seem to be that necessary. But with that being said, when he does need it, it is pretty important and it does save the day. And with the secret hiding place and locking mechanism, it is protected, so it may very well be a risk worth taking. This Batcave is of a certain calibre that means it has to be on this list. But since it's not technically THE Batcave, it has to be last place because it's just A Batcave. Number 9, Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. At the point of this game being released, this was the best Batcave that we'd ever seen in a video game to date, and it comes with all the standard features that you expect with a Batcave, including a Bat computer, a Batmobile, and Bat costumes and cases, and a lovely waterfall feature, with great detailing and excellent Bat Noir style ambience. What is this place? It's the Batcave. Ah. Unfortunately, this wasn't an open world game, meaning it wasn't possible to fully explore the Batcave, which is why it isn't higher on this list. Even though visually it looks fantastic, it is still just like the movie versions. You can look at it, but you can't interact with it, so it doesn't gain a higher rating. But it's still a beautiful design, and the Batcave level is playable as a stage for fighting. Number 8, LEGO Batman 3 Classic Adam West DLC. Holy overused reference, Batman! It's the DLC level that allows you to play as the classic Adam West Batman, complete with punch captions. What kind of treacherous scheme is this? Batman and Robin lured into an elaborate trap? Holy ember! The entire level basically plays a giant easter egg for the fans, with the level stuff full of as many references to the old TV show that is physically possible. And allows the player not only to see the classic Batcave in 3D LEGO, but also able to openly explore it and interact with it. And this is just a great treat for the fans, and the level is a lot of fun. It of course features everything you'd expect, the cave's lab area and retro computer, twin fireman poles for the dynamic duo to enter the cave. Brace yourself, boy wonder. Those are military grade poles, not for fun or recreation. And of course, the classic Batmobile from the unforgettable show. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Good luck, Cape Crusaders. 
And the Adam West minifigure is just adorable, and even features the gigantic bombs from the infamous Batman movie bomb disposal scene. And if you don't know the scene I'm talking about, YouTube it and you will not be disappointed. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Number 7. Batman Arkham Origins As the title suggests, Arkham Origins focuses on Batman's earlier years. We join the story of Bruce Wayne having been Batman for two years. And because of this, the Batcave is in its infancy as well. All it has really is a computer, a workspace, a lab, a makeshift hospital unit, a training section and a dock for the Batwing. Not even a place for the Batmobile. And even though later versions of the Batcave have a very similar layout, they looked a lot more thought out and, quite frankly, cooler. This just looks a bit rushed and thrown together. And it's just amazing that there isn't even a place for the Batmobile. But then if you can get everywhere by jet plane, why would you ever use a car? It does also feature a storage area of every bat suit that the Dark Knight can wear. I don't have time to prep the XE suit for deployment. I'll need Alfred to put the finishing touches on it. But ultimately, this Batcave is very basic. As I say, it feels like it's been very scrunched together and is very man cavey more than bat cavey. But there is a great moment in the game's DLC, Cold Cold Heart. You start playing as Bruce Wayne, who is hosting a New Year's party, and you get to go through the Wayne Mansion and use a secret entrance to access the Batcave, which is pretty awesome. So, if you'd come out of that cave more than once a week, you'd know that the Batcave entrance is in the wine cellar's tasting room. Look for the statue. And it is the first true Batcave that was featured in the Arkham game series, so it deserves to be on this list for that, if nothing else. But playing as Bruce Wayne and sneaking into it via the Wayne Mansion's secret tunnels is also a lot of fun, and it really appeals to the fanboy inside of me. Number 6. Lego Batman 2 This Batcave is simple, but it's also very elegant. Though the entrance to the Batcave leaves a lot to be desired, it's right by Gotham City and in no way subtle as to where it is so it's no surprise that Lex Luthor and Joker managed to find the cave with relative ease. But it has all a Batcave needs, the Batmobile, the Batwing and the Batboat, complete with a set of mannequins with uniforms and a Batcomputer that sits above the largest kryptonite deposit in the world. Why do we have so much of this stuff? I keep it in case Superman decides to be a bad guy one day. The water feature of the cave is a little bit over the top since it flows through nearly all of the Batcave, making it feel like the cave could be washed away at any point and one full step will land you right in the freezing water and heavy current. Though it does look pretty cool. And it is fun to fly the Batwing out of the Batcave yourself or drive the Batmobile out or even take the Batboat out, which is something that has never really been possible before in video games. In Arkham Origins there is a Batwing but it's all cutscenes when it flies out and the player never actually has control of the Batwing itself. As you may have noticed, the things I've listed in this Batcave are actually very similar to Arkham Origins. That's because, as I said, there are actually a lot of similarities, but LEGO Batman did it with way more style than the Arkham Origins did. It basically just has a much cooler aesthetic and just looks cooler. The waves, the Batcave, it just looks like so much more than the Arkham Origins Batcave did. Number 5. Telltale Batman I absolutely love the design animation of the Telltale games. It looks like a comic book, but it moves. Simple, but elegant and in my opinion it's one of the greatest styles ever made for telling a comic book story, and I only hope that they adapt more comic books in the years to come. Now in some respects, the Telltale games aren't really games, they're more interactive movies, at least in my opinion, though they do have some moments when you take full control of the character you're playing as, and it's because of this that open world exploration of the Batcave is not really possible whenever the player feels like it, but only at certain points in the story. But there are moments when you can interact with the Batcave, and with his unique art style, it may remain the truest to the comic book, at least in terms of aesthetics. The Batcave is no different to the design and look of a comic book, making it like a literal extension of the comics. The Batcave features a bat computer and a trophy area, and perhaps the best storage area for equipment and spare suits that features in any video game that has a Batcave. It also has the wonderful waterfall entrance and room for the Batmobile. The Batcave itself is set early on in Batman's career, so the cave is very much in its infancy, but it doesn't come across that way at all. The cave is well thought out, spacious, and has a perfect aesthetic for this Batman. And in true Telltale fashion, though it's not technically an open world, the player does still get to explore and interact with all the different aspects of the Batcave, earning it a high ranking in this list, as a person can either just look at how pretty the Batcave looks, or they can actually go further, interact and learn more and explore the area. Which is a great feature for the fans when they're in a Batcave, because if I went into the real Batcave in real life, I would not stop touching and looking at everything I could. Number 4. Injustice Gods Among Us I've never seen the Batcave. 
Our back cave, anyway. Should be. Interesting. When this video game was released, it featured, without question, the best looking back cave in a video game to date, and probably the best cave in media period. Even though it had been ransacked and damaged by Superman and the regime, it still is pretty awesome and features interactive options such as enabling a person to attack the enemy with the Batmobile. The Batcave is featured in both the main story mode and in the interactive fights as a stage you can select to fight on. It has two levels, so when a person is kicked off the side of the screen, they descend or ascend to the other level of the cave. It also has aqua access, a Batmobile, and just looks great. The only downside is that it's not an open world but a closed level, otherwise this would be higher in this list. So it only gets here on merits of looking good rather than actually being interactive and making you feel like Batman. Which is actually not the game's fault, after all it's designed so you can play as any character in any of the stages, so it wouldn't really make sense for you to feel more Batman on this level than any other, because what if you were playing as different characters? So it's not the game's fault because that's not really what they were going for. Number 3. Batman Arkham Knight DLC Maps One of the biggest complaints about the Arkham game series was that we never got the true Batcave. Yes, we had one in Arkham Origins, but this was the earlier Batcave and quite small, and the cave in Arkham Asylum wasn't the true Batcave, but a secondary Batcave that was separate to the main one. And when the Arkham Knight came out, we all expected to finally have the Batcave we'd all been waiting for all these years. As it was the last Arkham game planned, though hopefully more will be made later on, but unfortunately, the Batcave was not in the Arkham Knight's campaign. There was one level in a movie studio where Robin was working on a secret antidote and there was the Joker's held prison, but that wasn't a Batcave, it was just a secondary base. We also went to Oracle's home in the Clock Tower, which did feature a pretty cool computer setup, but wasn't a Batcave in any real sense. Do I come in the Batcave, start messing with all your stuff? However, in the DLC maps of Arkham Knight, we can play in the Batcave, and we can even play as Alfred, which in some ways is actually more fun than playing as Batman, because as all Batman fans know, Alfred is badass. You keep out of harm's way, no more heroics. These animals don't frighten me. Alfred. You'd better get to the wine cellar before I have to take on Penguin's entire gang myself. The Batcave is huge and features everything you want from the Batcave. The classic Batmobile is parked in the cave, the Batwing is hovering in place ready for use, the Batcomputer is there with over a dozen storage servers plugged into it, and the classic robot dinosaur is in the level, though it's not quite as big as you'd actually expect a dinosaur to be. With that being said, it does of course have its flaws. No giant penny for example, though to be fair most Batcaves miss this detail out these days as they're going for a darker, more imposing Batcave. There is also no trophies of Batman's victories and case files, and there's no storage for any of the superhero suits worn by Batman and his other partners. But it more than makes up for these flaws with the aesthetics. The cave walls are detailed and refined with water dripping down them and a waterfall over one entrance. And though it isn't really interactive outside of the normal things Batman can do throughout the game, it is huge, imposing and available to fully explore. And it does true justice to that which we've seen in the comics over the years. The tone is gritty and imposing, the true essence of Batman, and though it's not as complete in details as some others on this list, it does capture the perfect tone and comes with everything a fanboy needs. And it allows the player to look around it fully at their leisure, not only as Batman, but as Robin, Catwoman, Nightwing, Azrael, Harley Quinn, Batgirl, the Red Hood, and, as I've mentioned, there is even a mod for playing as Alfred, which is my personal favourite character to play on in this level. And it also has to be said that hunting the bad guys in the Batcave is literally a dream come true for most fanboys. Number 2. Lego Batman 3 The Batcave feature in this game is incredible. To begin with, it's gigantic. Seriously, the scale of the Batcave was only beaten by the one shown in the Lego Batman movie. It features aquatic access with beautifully animated water, a bat computer and a slideways teleporter to the Justice League Watchtower, a trophy room complete with giant penny and robotic dinosaur, both of which are classic items from the Batcave's history, special VR training missions that involve travelling inside a computer into a Tron-like world, quite cool even if it's not really got anything to do with traditional Batman lore, there's trophy cabinets featuring the alternate costumes of both Batman and Robin, and it has customization dressing rooms for character design. And it also has a special set from the classic Adam West show that features a secret entrance that takes you back in time to play a small DLC of the classic Batman show. 
And in the level of the game, it actually features a bat rocket that allows you to travel into space, and yet still somehow manages to look like a bat. It must take a lot of effort to make sure everything he drives or flies looks like a bat. And though it may seem odd that a LEGO game would be so high on this list when there are much more mature and darker themed bat caves out there, this cave does deserve it. It's got all the classic features, it has a grand size, and it comes complete with several interactive missions and puzzles to complete. Basically, it's a lot of fun. And although it doesn't make you feel like the true Batman, you are playing as a LEGO figure at the end of the day, it does still get across the essence of being Batman. It gets across just how much money Batman has, looking at the huge size of this. It also gets across his superhero friends who just drop by for favours. And though I did hesitate to put it this high on the list, I couldn't say no, because it is completely interactive, more interactive than a lot of Batcaves on this list, it looks beautiful, and most importantly of all, it actually follows the comics nearly perfectly in places, even coming complete with a Bat Hound and a Bat Cow, which are both characters from the Batman comics, believe it or not. Master Bruce, would you care for something to eat? Thanks, Alfred. If you could bring it down here, that would be great. Master Bruce, there's a whole mansion of rooms upstairs to eat in comfortably. Down here would be great, thanks. Number 1. Arkham VR This Batcave, in my opinion, was the greatest ever made. We start at the piano and access one of the secret entrances. Then we descend from Wayne Mansion into the Batcave with the epic music of the game playing. It's an amazing moment. You descend slowly as a civilian and then suit up as Batman and become a superhero with your own gadgets and batarangs. Hit three targets to continue calibration. The Batcave itself is very immersive and allows for small amounts of interaction. You look through the history of characters such as Nightwing and Robin, conduct scientific tests and grapple from room to room. The grappling is necessary of course because with this being VR you are unable to walk around the room. And it has plenty of extras from the Arkham games, including recaps of the games and looking at the custom weapons that the villains used, like the Scarecrow's glove, Joker's Titan gun, and many other weapons. You can also see the actual recorded video that the Joker sends Batman of him killing Jason Todd. The video was actually referenced in the Arkham Knight video game, and you got to see it from a different perspective as them recording it, but this time you actually get to see it from the camera's point of view, as Batman must have first watched it. Who is the big bad? And you can take a close-up examination of the Batmobile from Arkham Knight and Adam West Batmobiles and other incarnations of the Batmobile. There's also the Batwing to examine along with other characters from the Batman Arkham series that can be examined up close and life-sized. The cave even comes complete with a Batarang firing range to test your skills. Though with the VR helping you aim it is nearly impossible to miss, but still a great amount of fun. And after all, Batman would never miss in real life, and since you're playing as Batman, it kinda makes sense. In fact, I probably spent longer exploring the Batcave than I did actually playing the game's campaign. And though it's not the largest or most accurate to the comics Batcave ever made, it is definitely the most immersive and makes the player truly feel like they're Batman. Which is exactly what a Batman game should do. It's part of the reason the Arkham games are so successful, because you feel like you're Batman. And this took it to the new level as you actually became Batman and could move your hands around like you were Batman. It's just a lot of fun. And though it doesn't have as many features as other Batcaves on this list, it's definitely the most fun to experience and play inside of. And if you turn the graphics up full on PC, it looks as though you're actually standing in the Batcave. The detail is really amazing. Though on my PC, unfortunately, it overheats the graphics card and lags a lot if I play it for too long on full definition. But even at half the definition, it still looks awesome. The only real flaw is that there isn't more to do in the Batcave, but unfortunately VR is still in its infancy and it takes a lot of coding. But if this is where the future of Batman games is going, then I am fully committed to them. And that is the 10 best Batcaves in video games. Do you agree with this list, or do you think they should be in a different order? And which Batcave is your personal favourite? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.